Hi, I'm Brendan, the greatest and most humble studio painter on planet Earth, and with me are John and Tony. Good morning. Hey, guys. Uh, today I'm going to be painting the Frightmare, or parts of it. I've already begun on the horse flesh. I'm going to start with the imp face right there in the middle. Dude, I think I love that miniature. Uh, it's a pretty awesome miniature. I'm uh, pretty sure it's the creepiest thing, like, yeah. ever. Can you, uh, quick, real quick, can you give us, like, a, just give us a turnaround on oh, that yeah. thing and let everybody see all those weird heads. Dude. It's just a whole bunch of heads throwing up a whole bunch of heads. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is wicked. All right, so I got some colors with me today I'm going to be using. Uh, I got a whole assortment, but for the imp flesh, I'll be starting with Midland flesh uh, mixed with Troll Blood Highlight, and then I'll move on to some Cardic flesh and add some Trader Green. And Of course, I'll have the backup of Thamar Black, Morrow White, Menoth White Highlight. Those are just good to have on hand in case you need to mix them together, lighten up or darken up some color values and whatnot. Okay, tell us a little bit about why you selected these colors. Oh, these colors, because um, they're the ones that I figured out how to paint imp flesh the uh, way I like the most. Um, so for a lot of the Grimkin, we try to desaturate a lot of the palette. Um, so since I'm working with brighter value colors, I'm using Troll Blood Highlight um, instead of like a Bastion Gray or something that's darker but neutral. Um, mix in with stuff just to kind of offset a little bit, make it look a little less lively, a little, little more creepy. Um, and then, but I'm still using reds and greens to shade, which is typical of flesh. And then the red ink is really going to give it that almost cartoony, characterized, brighten up David the Gnome type look. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to start by mixing together my base color for this in flesh. And I'm just using some really bad brushes because I just want to be quick. And for folks that don't know, David the Gnome was also really creepy. <laughs> Um, so there's no real set amount of, when I mix colors, I try to go for a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, that means I don't have to like keep in mind and keep remembering uh, how much I used, what the ratio was, because if it's always one-to-one -one for the most part, it makes it easy to remember. So that's just a personal preference of mine. I will add a little bit more Midland here. All right, so. And if folks have questions for Brendan, feel free to type them out. We won't necessarily be able to get to all of them, but uh, we'll get to what we can. So I'm just using probably the worst brush in existence, but I'm used to it, so it's fine. It is kind of awkward painting on camera at these angles, so bear with me. So I have a question for you two. Oh, okay. What is your favorite Grimkin model that's come out so far, or that will come out in July and September? I'm straight up Team Nayslayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a, with, with a close second being the Glimmer Imp. I think uh, I think I've fallen in love with Skin and Moans. He has uh, been my desktop background on both of my monitor screens in my office since uh, we released that video. He just looks so cool. Oh, he, he he's super dope. And people will get to see more of Skin and Moans very very very, very soon. Very soon, yeah. Maybe <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit tomorrow even. Ooh. That and we bit. see you too, Doug. <laughs> the cameras we put in his house make sure he stays working <laughs> all right that's the base coat i just gotta wait for it to dry a little bit hopefully this isn't too washed out of an image for you okay yeah, i think we'll be able to see a little better once uh it's a little bit darker colors and yeah get some contrast going So while I'm waiting for that to dry, um, I'm just going to go ahead and just base coat the witch's flesh so I don't have to be not doing anything for a little bit. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try uh, kind of similar, but she's going to have a much lighter face, um, much more pallid and whatnot. So I'm going to start with Rin Flesh and mix it up with Troll Blood Highlight again. And I don't have a set formula already, recipe for this, so I'm just going to throw some colors in a pot until I'm happy with it. Still add some Troll Blood Highlight. That's a bit dark, so I'm going to add some Menoth White Highlight there too. That'll be good. And again, I'm just using this really bad, terrible brush. But it's the one I like for base coating, so I deal with it. Get that ear. Yeah, being a frightmare on a Sunday morning is not any fun. <laughs> People are talking about it. Looks like he's having like literally the worst hangover ever. <laughs> uh, I think this is intentionally the creepiest model we have in our line. It's, if, yeah, it's certainly one of the most disturbing. So unless Matt gets was lying to me, it's, there's a reason for it being so nasty and disgusting. But that's kind of the thing I like about the Grimkin line because it has those creepy, kind of flavorful fairy tale horror creatures. But then at the same time, it also has like just the nightmare aspect. Like you said, you like the skin and bones and stuff, so... Unlike uh, other creepy aspects, or uh, you know, looking closely at the front claws of the gorehound, the the hands are very people-like on this kind of skeletal, creepy creature. Yeah, he had the uh, Rob William hands. Robin Williams. <laughs> Stefan, you'll be able to find out more of the lore of both the Frightmare and pretty much everything else in the Grimkin faction as one as we get closer to lock and load and then of course at lock and load for the pre-release which will include you know super near everything and then everything else uh, that we've got in that first wave will be out towards the end of July and Brendan correct me if I'm wrong but this is a studio model you're painting right? this is a studio model yeah or will be as long as Dallas approves. <laughs> All right, so now that is pretty well base coated, but my other, uh, my imp flesh is dry. So I'm gonna go back and do another uh, layer using two brush blending. So I'm gonna mix the next colors. Uh, for the first shade, I'm using Cardic Flesh. Give it that red appearance there. And I'm also gonna mix that with a little bit of Trouble at Highlight. This is one where I'm not doing a one-to-one -one ratio because I just want to tint it just a tiny bit with the neutral color, but I don't want to overtake it with the gray. Um, so the recipe I have for the imp flesh uses a lot of layers, so I, I go pretty wet with it. I don't use very thick paint. Um, it also has a lot of room for air. And just fixing it as you go. So, all right. So I'm just gonna start like down here. It's very subtle. Hopefully you can see it. It's almost wash-like as I just direct it around with the two brush blending. That's just one of the great things about two brush blending. Is even if you're just using washes, you can help kind of narrate where it settles around in the miniature really easily. Try not to hit the microphones with my brushes. All 
You didn't see it, but Tony's hand was really close to my mouth just now. <laughs> oh, microphone adjustments. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. So, Brendan, is your intent with these faces for each one to be progressively a little lighter, or are they going to be similar in shade? Um, well, it's not necessarily my intent. It's I go off a color concept and kind of have a little bit of leeway between those. Um, but imp, imp, it's, she's, it's a horse head throwing up an imp. <laughs> uh, so the imp flesh is just going to try to keep it in line just to keep that consistency between the models and the faction. Nice. And then the uh, witch head kind of can just be whatever I want because it's just this... Well, you'll, you'll understand when you learn the lore a little bit more. They don't tell me too much. Uh, I'm going to add some Trader Green uh, to the last shade mix for the next layer, by the way. Um, this is going to just darken it up and give the green that's usually in flesh. It shows up in the darker shades. Uh, they don't tell me too much because I don't like keeping my mouth shut. I don't go out of my way, but... <laughs> It's, it's kind of the same with me because it's literally my job to make sure everyone knows what I know. <laughs> so I'm not the best person to tell secrets because it's literally my job to not keep my mouth shut. Yeah, that's you know, one, of the, one of the curses of having really cool information sometimes is uh, just not being able to share it when you want to talk about it. <laughs> All right, so this one can be a little more subtle. I'm just trying to get in the crevices. Oh, Travis Mark just joined. Hi, don't Travis. You, Travis, don't you have a job? <laughs> Jeff wants to know what kind of beard oil you use, Brendan. Um, I don't use any beard oil. Is that something I should look into? What What exactly does beard oil do? I don't know. That's why I well, use it probably. Well, for people who don't have beards as majestic as Brendan's. It can be used to, you know, strengthen condition, kind of like, you know, like taking care of your hair in general, but gives it a nice healthy shine. I focused all my genetic energy into making sure my beard looked good. That's why I don't have a hair on the top of my head. Gosh. So it was just, it was just. Fair trade. Fair yeah, trade. Yeah. I've been rocking the uh, late 90s scruff for some <laughs> I uh, have a beard, but don't know what to do with it. Beard oil is a new one to me. And also, when I read that, I didn't add that Jeff would like to know. Jeff actually wrote, Jeff would like to know. <laughs> apparently, apparently, he's all about the third person now. Oh, yeah. um, so that is subtle, but it shifts enough for my liking. So. And then, Brendan, is that a resin model? Um, I'm not sure what the final is going to be, because we... I don't, it's just the way production works between all the different departments. So yeah. sometimes what we end up with isn't necessarily the final type of uh, casting choice. But that also means sometimes we end up with like the first shots that really, really suck before it gets to everyone else. So it's not an advantage by any means, but I'm not sure what this is going to be. Um, basically, the simple answer, since I don't actually have the full information right now either, is we use whatever material is going to look best for the details on the model and for as best as possible for, you know, ease of putting things together and making sure it looks okay. good. All right. All right. Pretty happy with that. I can always reclaim areas, which is one step I always do on these guys um, when I get back to the highlights. Um, so next, I'm going to use some red ink. Um, and this is going to really make certain areas pop on this guy. Turn this a little bit for you guys. Um, re just ink in general is extremely harsh, so you just want to make sure you, you uh, water it down some. I'm going to add some mixing medium because it helps... Uh, with the translucency of it, it's going to also help make it less 
of a dramatic shift when I put it on there. Because I can always work in multiple layers until I get what I want. So. So I'm going to mix up a little bit because I know my next shade is also going to use this red ink here. So. use my hand real quick to kind of test the translucency if you can see it I'm not sure nope too washed out I'll go back <laughs> anyways trust me I ha it happened <laughs> so this I'm going to use still kind of like a wash make sure I get around the eyes with the redness and so with this you're just trying to add a bit more color into the flash um I am but I'm trying to also like while while it's going to be a subtle shift I'm still trying to go for like that almost cartoony super red um since they're more of a fairy tale creature for the most part um because that was the type of stuff i was exposed to growing up art wise so trying to bring it in and then brendan the mixing medium does it also act as a binding agent between the ink and the water or is it purely just for the added translucency um i don't know the exact way it works it is magical though um it it helps keep pigment um, together, but it will also make it more translucent. So if you just add it directly to paint, you'll notice that the paint will become uh, less opaque. Less opaque. It's going to say more translucent, but then I would have said that a couple times in a row. So um, I talked to a couple of people about mixing medium, and it sounds like we all use it for different things. <laughs> So use it whatever, with whatever experience makes it work for you. But um, if I end up with like chalky paint, I'll add mixing medium and that helps out. So I guess it does help bind it a little bit um, for sure. And then if I just need it to be uh, smoother, um, glide on, like it's great for washes as well. So. I've seen Dallas use it to... Um uses it instead of glue on his base. He uses mixing medium to lay down gravel. Yep, we do that for uh, our studio models here. So. Go back to the front here. So you can see it's tinting this pretty red. Mm -hmm. um, which I will come back to. So painting for a studio model is it's definitely different than painting a tabletop or even competition level because we're trying to paint to a specific angle of what we think the f uh, photograph's going to be. So hopefully some of this translates for how people want to paint their models. That's, uh, that's certainly something interesting to talk about. What are some of the, the more specific challenges that you have trying to paint a studio model versus something that you might paint for yourself? Um, well, the camera definitely picks up things you wouldn't expect. Um, so if you get your model uh, professionally photographed, particularly in our particular light box and the cameras we use, um, you might see certain things look way better than you thought they were when you painted them originally. Um, I'm going to add some Crixbane base to this red ink now. Um, but then some things you thought looked good, like your metal, then wash, then maybe a highlight, will not look good <laughs> on a studio model uh, under cameras and, and whatnot. So it really just changes um, how you need to paint. Um, and not even necessarily that you need to become a better painter. You just need to readapt to it. Like that's definitely something I had to learn. I'm still learning. I mean, we're still learning how to paint. I don't think you ever get over that. Um, cause, cause the camera has a different eye than a human eye. So what it picks up on, what you got to learn, how it reacts to colors with the light bending off of it and stuff isn't something normal people need to worry about when you're painting a model. Um, which is why sometimes you might paint something and someone will be like, oh, that looks way better than your photograph. And you're like, yeah, that's because the photograph doesn't help it out because your human eye is worse than a camera. Yeah, because you painted it with the <laughs> so, eye and yeah. now you're looking at it with an yeah. eye. Um, but uh, as far as like techniques are concerned, we use all the same techniques. Um, we use obviously two brush plenty because it's just faster. But at the same time, we're worried about kind of figuring out where we think the uh, 
photograph's going to be. So I'm twisting this guy around because I'm trying to simulate like how my eye would do it. So I'm trying to figure out where the highlights would be. On this guy, I kind of feel like it's going to be something like maybe this, just because the silhouette kind of shows off the tail a little bit. The angle's cool. You get a good view of all the heads and faces. Um, but sometimes I'm dead wrong. So I'll paint for this angle, and then all of a sudden it'll be like this, right? And it's like, uh, okay, that's cool, but the paint job's not going to look quite as good. I mean, I messed up. But that's my fault. That's not anyone else's fault. That was just, I guessed wrong. But I'm pretty sure it's not going to be like this just because of the way she's tilted and learned. I, I, I can almost bet money she'll be like this. And I might have to pay people to make sure it's like this just so I don't sound like an idiot when this goes live and <laughs> all the videos. But anyways, uh, so that's just another part of CEO painting that's just you never have to worry about or concern yourself with normally. Um, it certainly looks like the pose that uh, that I would go with naturally as well. Yeah, I'm hoping. I mean, it shows off everything. Like I said, it's just a good silhouette too. So, um, so now I'm going to go back with this red ink with a little bit of Crixbane base just for the deep shadows here. Um. And then uh, for the for the body, since that wasn't part of this particular uh, mm -hmm. stream. What what were the primary colors used for like the the horse flesh and her and her body flesh there? Um, so the horse flesh started with gun corpse brown mixed with um, what was it bastion gray. Um, again, I was just using a a normal color I'd use mixed with a little bit of a neutral color just to desaturate it a little bit. Um, then I added some thornwood green to that for the mix um, and then I did a shade of thornwood green with bloodstone and I did that almost wash like uh, and then the next stage was uh, another shade after that for deeper um, for battlefield brown with Crixbane base then I added a little bit of Thamar black and that was just for the really dark lines and, and shading And then I went back to uh, highlight just with the base color, and then I started adding thrall flesh and mouth white highlight. Nice, looks good. Um, so you were talking about how you know when you're painting the studio models, you're painting for the camera. Do you ever take test shots like with your phone camera or something else just to see if you think you're on the right track, or is it all just done by eye up until that point? Um, it's all done by eye because um, it's. Uh, there's a couple people involved in what the final shot's going to be, so it's still really hard to determine. Um, but that's kind of just what the training and practice is. Um, like, I didn't even see a final shot for the first couple months of working here, so I'm, like, painting studio models without any real idea of how the what I need to improve upon for the camera and all that stuff. Um, that's trial by fire for you, though. <laughs> so... Not counting this model, if it's the case, but what's your favorite model you've painted for the studio so far? <sighs> My favorite? Now that it's over with, probably the Sea King. <laughs> the Sea King is dope. That looks amazing. Um, yeah. It, it was the first week and a half was fun painting. And then I got to all the barnacles, and that was... Uh, it's not the mass amount of barnacles. It's just the studio quality necessary for those barnacles was... Uh, was an ordeal was a trial <laughs> was it just a lot of tedium just over and over right yeah the same thing? base coating all that and stuff like that and if it was if i but then i look at the the photograph right and it's like you barely see any of the uh barnacles so i was stressing for i was like <laughs> shouldn't even done that much work right <laughs> on, on the hidden ones like under the the tabard the, and all that that's all right anytime it gets on video we end up seeing a lot more uh front side and back then mm -hmm. it usually gets done in the photograph so hopefully it'll get some more air time yeah um so i'm gonna let that dry before i go back to reclaim some um and i'm gonna go back with just put another layer on the witch face while that's drying which one was your first studio model uh the list healer oh right on yeah that was my that first model. like official studio model i came in i had to paint a uh a mule which was fun but you had to learn two brush blending and all that so um, but that wasn't a studio mule, mule that was just practicing on a mule and then stuff happened and then they needed me to paint models immediately so jumped right in on the list healer there so. jeez that looks gross i hope so but like in the best kind of way 
Like, yeah. Every every layer he adds is creeping me out a little bit the, more. The exciting, like, creepy, <laughs> gross. Yeah, like yeah. yeah I can, I'm really anxious to get all these little pustules right here. Oh yeah. And just make them like nasty zits that haven't pot. Like you, you can see the back here has got I think four of them as well. Yeah, it's really disgusting. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm <laughs> completely done with all the, the layers, I'll go back with red ink and like put it around like just the redness and in, in the hands here with like the horns i guess they're hooves that turned into claws to make them look like they're still bleeding and then put them around all the pustules and stuff i think it should look pretty good so right, super go gross so what super colors awesome are you using right now were you just base coating the uh, uh now face again? Uh, yeah i just base coat the wrist of uh, the witch's face again but now i'm going back with the base coat color on the imp to just reclaim some of the areas since i used a lot of like heavy washes and stuff like that even though they're subtle like they're still I think I need to reclaim a little bit here before I go onto the highlight layers. And then when you and Dallas are, are kind of dividing up which models, which is painting, do you, either of you like exhibit any faction bias on which ones you paint? Like, you know, like him doing Kate or you doing red, so on um, and so forth, or is it just, uh, what, how much do you get to choose which models you're painting? Um, generally you just put it on a board and then we play a game of war machine. Whoever wins gets to select the next model. Or we have a, like a little studio painter fight club that we uh, no. Uh, <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so my face is still pretty and not scarred. It's why they're so. near. <laughs> neither you or, or Dallas have hair, so no one can grab onto it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's kind of just whatever comes, whoever's painting what. Because um, sometimes models take a long time, and sometimes they don't. Um, so I don't think there's particular. Like, I know there's certain models Dallas wants to paint coming up. Um, I don't care so much. I mean, of course, there's, like, a preference, right? Like, of course, I wanted to paint the Sea King. I love trolls. Um, but there's not a hard rule on, like, who... Yeah, there's, there, yeah, there's no stuff. hard rule. We, it's definitely best for uh, to learn how to paint all this stuff working here, just because you don't know when you need to paint something. So Word. Yeah. Because sometimes people take vacations or they go to conventions like Origins and leave for a week and leave me with all the work. To, I mean, you know. We're not talking about Dallas today. No, no, no. no yeah, he, he wasn't I never just say streaming a bad thing from, about Dallas. from Origins earlier today. That wasn't him. That, no, was, that wasn't him. That was the doppel Dallas. Hmm. I'm just using this to go and uh, do all that reclaiming. So Joris also just asked which was uh, your favorite model to just paint, and he had actually just answered that a couple minutes ago. It was the Sea King. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, now, now. I said that was my favorite model that I painted, not to paint. I think uh -huh. those are two different questions. Well, she said as a studio painter. As a studio. Well, I just meant like, I love my finished work on the Sea King, even though I still see things I should have done better. But I think that's oh, always the case. Okay, that's the I see final, what you're saying. But, yeah, that's oh, the final okay. part. Sorry, sorry. Uh, that's the one you have the most fun with. The most fun? Uh, I'm trying to think. There's been so many at this point. <laughs> um, I think it's Marvel 3. Because the sculpt is just so great. And I got to do some freehand on the little sash and stuff like that. Nice. Um, or Kane 3. Like, not because they're three men units. Like I prefer to play single models at a time. But... Like, Kane is my favorite character in, in War Machine, yeah, like, hands too. down. So just being able to paint a studio version of that was just, it was giddy every second. So <laughs> that was my favorite one to paint. But for now, there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh-oh, Dallas actually just joined the chat. Uh, hey, Dallas. He heard we were talking about him. Yeah, he knew, he knew we were talking about him slacking off and hanging out with Hungerford and uh, Magellan and folks over at uh, Origins. Playing around all day, hanging with folks, not doing anything useful. No, nope, not painting a wander or anything. <laughs> um, I have to do a lot more reclaiming than I thought I did, but it's just a part of the process. So Dallas, I'm actually going to throw the uh, the same question at you if you want to respond in the chat. What was your favorite studio model to paint? Not necessarily the one you were happiest with what the end result was, but your favorite one to paint.
So um, tell uh, Brendan, just in case uh, right. people don't know, give us a, a quick recap of what reclaiming is. Um, so reclaiming is kind of just going back over with your base color. Um, normally, if you do a base coat wash before you do, you, uh, even if you do that, like that simple method, you still probably want to go back with your base coat before you move on your highlight. And that would be reclaiming. Because even just a, a base coat and then a wash will uh, want you to, because um, it'll tint the base coat color. So when you go to the highlight color, you lost a lot of your base coat color, if, depending on how heavy you used this to wash. Um, so just reclaiming with your base coat color. So even though I'm using two brush blending in a lot of stages here, um, it's kind of like a safety net to just go back and reclaim to make sure that when I go to my highlight, I'm not taking it from uh, base coat, shade, 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 and I lose all my base coat. So I'm actually using the highlight on top of my shade colors as opposed to my base coat colors, um, which is a pretty good thing to keep in mind when you practice two brush blending as well, because you don't want to that transition doesn't create that beautiful gradient that two brush filling can help if you just keep washing out all your colors from the previous step. See, apparently Dallas is just a slacker. He's telling you to just dry brush it. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just doing this for the camera. I'm going to go dry brush the studio, the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm on camera, so I want to look like I'm better than I am. Privateer press, <laughs> secrets revealed. Yeah. Just dry brush everything. Oh, yeah. It's how I got my Signar Army done. <laughs> like, most of the details and stuff are just dry brushing I left and that went over with the base coat and highlight and was like, done, nailed it. <laughs> yeah, this face is so good. I'm also painting the madcaps right now, and they're just so much fun. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they look really cool. They got a lot of cool little details. So I was debating between them and this guy, which I probably shouldn't have said because now people that want the madcaps are going to get upset at me. But deal with it. <laughs> I'm fine with my Bring decision. Bring to show us today? That's mean. Huh? What? They just released the uh, solicitation shots of the non-painted ones. So. It, it's okay. This, this, this Frightmare is legitimately super creepy enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. What what were you doing with your life before you became a studio painter, Brendan? Um, I was working something. I was just painting all the time. Now I'm just painting all the time. I don't have anything to do other than paint. So um, I was working uh, in an antique shop. But, like, I would paint for three or four hours before I went in, and I'd paint for three or four hours when I got home. So now I'm just painting for eight hours a day, which is the same thing, and I just have <laughs> have basically a work worth of time to do whatever I want. Nice. So it works out. Do you still paint a lot when you go home? Um, I would love to, but I just moved, and I find myself going to play War Machine a lot at the local gaming stores, so... Also a good way to spend um, your time. A great way to spend your time. It's a great game. Well, especially if you're going to spend all that time painting, you want to go show it off, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish I could bring the uh, the Sea King to play some colossal, extreme colossal wrestling, because that game was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even, like, being all on, like, private to your press for that. Like, I've played it. It's really fun. I think everyone should try to play that game. Oh, yeah. I was doing some playtesting of that with Hungerford and Schick before before it got published, and I'm like, this is gold. We, we definitely need to do this because this is a blast. Like, just the... It, it's so easy to get into that in, into the mindset of that game and start yelling stuff at each other and, like, you know, calling out your super moves and stuff. It's, it's, it's a right... It's, it's way fun to watch, too. All right. Especially when Oz busts out his big bad laser daddy. Dude, that model looks so good. Well, he like bedazzled <laughs> it and stuff, and he's got a little crown he wears while he's playing. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> like, he goes full hype. It's amazing. It's the glittery, goldest model I've ever seen. All right. So I kind of worked myself into a trance and just kept doing that. All right. So I'm going to move on <laughs> to another layer of highlight here. So I'm just going to do uh, Rin Flesh. I'm going to do it just a smooch of Troll Blood Highlight with it. That'll be my first uh, 
How much exactly um, is a smooch? Uh, well, smooch would be a tiny amount, um, as opposed to a one to one ratio. I'd be talking more like a three to one ratio. But since I've already mixed up the witch's flesh, I'm actually just going to use the witch's flesh. Face coat color, because um, it's close enough for me, and I already got it mixed. And that'll help bring that color into other portions of the model a little bit, um, which will just give it a little more when, the f when photography happens. <laughs> so this color will be good enough. Because, I mean, it's a flesh tone. Flesh tones can be similar, but they don't have to be exactly the same. Even It's not like painting up a uh, Kato Red or Signar Blue, where all of that should be pretty much exactly identical. Like You have more play with flesh tones, which is probably why I enjoy painting up um, models with lots of it. So when you do get time to paint at home, do you still look forward to doing it now that it's your job? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I have a uh, conver uh, Cephalix conversion army I'm doing with monstrosities using uh, the child's uh, beast that comes up with her. i um, using a lot of those, so I'm really excited to paint those up, which I'll probably actually do at Lock and Load. I think I've seen some of those on your desk. You need adding, like, a lot of brass brass wire and rod for different pipes and stuff on oh it? yeah trying to just it's like a different pose but definitely trying to make them look as much like monstrosities as i can for sure yeah they're really good looking um but i do i love painting so so you're going to be painting those up possibly at lock and load um probably i'll have them on my, my desk for sure wherever i'm at um, july 14th through 16th at the main matter center <laughs> in bellevue washington get your tickets at pplockandload.com yeah all that Are you gonna be uh, Are you gonna be working on any of uh, the Signar stuff? Any of the like the new trencher models and stuff like that? Uh, I will be painting up some of them. Yes. Nice. I mean, there's just so many coming. <gasps> what? <laughs> so, I mean, Dallas can't paint them all even if he wanted to. Which one of you gets to paint the dog? Um, I don't know. It's whoever wants to paint it most, more than likely, because that, as awesome as it as it is, it probably will be a faster paint job. Sure. Compared to like an actual trencher with all the buckles and stuff. So I think Dallas wants to paint it. I'm not an arguer, so if he ever wants to paint something up, I'm like, yeah, whatever. That's cool. You're such a giver. We showed that model off last week. I think, uh, I can't remember the first name Dallas gave to it, but he called it's it the Lieutenant. greatest of boys. Yeah. But then yesterday, Schick uh, called it Lieutenant Schick was something. Lieutenant, Lieutenant War Snuzzles. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we could combine those two Lieutenant War Snuzzles, the goodest of boys. So I'm going to divert from this imp face real quick. So one thing I'm going to do, uh, I was planning on it anyways, but since I have a color mix, that's good enough. I'm going to use the base coat uh, of the imp flesh, the Midland flesh plus uh, Trouble Blood Highlight. I'm actually going to bring that up on the lip of the horse itself because I'm going to make this red um, by the end to make it look like it's, it's sore from stretching out. And this is going to help supply a nice little color foundation, make it lighter so when I get some ink on there, whatever reddish color I want to use will help make it pop a little bit more. So you mentioned that you're working on your, your Cephalix conversion. Um, and then I know that one of the times I've gone to play while you were out playing, you were playing Cricks. Are those your, pretty much your primary factions right now, or are you playing anything else? Um, I play or have played every War Machine faction. I love them all so much. I'm resigning myself to play Mercenaries. Just nice. because from the painting perspective, it's almost like playing multiple armies in one. So if I want to paint up something crazy, Crix-like, I have the Cephalix. If I want to do something, you know, then, then if I'm tired of painting all that stuff, I can switch over to, like, my dwarves with all their jacks. And then if I'm tired of painting jacks and armor, I can switch over to pirates and cool tattoos and stuff like that. So... Which is normally what I do anyways, but I have to sh jump factions for it. So it allows me to stay in that one faction and do it. 
Yeah, that's one thing I never realized. I got a small Merc Force, but but you're right. It is nice to just be able to, <clears throat> rather than painting kind of the, the stock colors that you have on your more um, consistent factions, just being able to jump around different yeah. styles, different colors, different looks, different techniques, and everything still works together because of the oh totally the, the fluff of the faction. Well, I'm and I'm looking forward to to getting a, a Merc Force together as well. Probably closer to the holidays because I'm still working on getting my Retribution finished. But uh, I, I decided that that. Kane three is gonna be my 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 Merc caster. Oh yeah, I, love I, I originally picked him up to to do a, a different Signar army, but I was like, this gives me a real good reason to to go Mercs. <laughs> and there's a lot of really cool Merc Jackson units. Um, and like one of my favorite units was like the at least like way back in the day when I played originally was uh I think it's the Steelhead Halberdiers. I'm adding men off white highlight to the Witch Flesh um, base coat real quick just for the last final highlight on this. Um, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. But... No, no, you're the you're, you're the star, man. Oh, so sweet. The greatest, most humble painter at oh, of course. Privateer Press. You don't get humbler than me. I'm the greatest at being humble. <laughs> I'm a terrific humbler. Um, yeah, I agree about Kane 3. Um, I think playing him as a mercenary, you try not to get wrapped up in his feet because um, he can use his feet with his own little battle group there. Mm -hmm. um, and just to worry, let's just think about Calamity, right? Like Calamity with Aeon on Holt, that's a plus four damage swing. Mm -hmm. And then you have like Adrian's with Prey. That's PAL 17 guns without CRA. What? <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's really good. So. You don't just get painting with Brandon. You that's, get theory that's power as well. eight. That's power 18 on the charge. Because they have Brutal Charge? We are what? just down the hall from development. So they could probably hear you. They're probably nerfing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's there's a there's a couple of Merc fans in this general neck of the woods of the office, so I I don't think I don't think it's gonna be a problem. But it's not a problem. It's just really good. No, it's dope. <laughs> it's yeah. not like people have don't have tools to deal with Idrian. Yeah, that's not even dug in. Like fun. they go away. It's fine. But that means I only need six of them to kill a mountain king. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I said it. Six of them killed a Mountain King on the charge. What's up, Mountain King? You wish you were a Sea King. <laughs> you're four inches more. You're two more inches away. Right. Yeah, I haven't decided what's going to make up the, the the rest of the bulk of my units for that army yet. Right, still, wait. still trying to. Well, I highly suggest the bow core. Why? Hmm. Because he's foul 21 on the charge when he's within six inches of the cane three with all those buffs. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, you get shield guard, which is huge because uh, Ryan and Watts like dying. Sure. It's sure. their thing. That's what they're really good at. How do you feel about crow's cutthroats? Um, depends on the caster. Um, on their own, in faction... Yeah, they're all right, I guess. But like, and uh, I really want to try them with Magnus too. I feel like it gets some oh, mileage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I feel like you have to work so hard to get that to work that it, it's not really worth the investment. Like that's the thing I don't like having to. I don't like my my opponents having say in how I need to interact with their army. I like building armies <laughs> where it's just like I'm doing this if you like it or not. So deal with it, or give me a problem that I can't answer. Um, so I would I would like to do a Dominator and Cephalix with him just because, you know, Thexus, TK, and his feet. Yeah. It means I can easily choreograph that without even worrying about what my opponents are doing. Because I ran Crow's Cutthroats with uh, Scabarus when I was playing Crix a lot. I just um, have really fond memories of painting them and, like, making each one of the, the guys in the unit, like, unique. Crow's awesome. Like, yeah. Crow's great. Like, I ran him with Kane 3 just for sh poops and giggles. And, uh... <laughs> uh I got behind Fiora 3, and Crow just shot her in the face, and he didn't do much damage, but she couldn't cast spells, and I don't care about your feet, Fiora 3, if you can't cast spells. <laughs> yeah, I said it. And right now, are you just trying to reclaim and pick out details? or I am not reclaiming. I'm on to the, the first real highlight layer. That's what I meant. Or the second highlight layer, I'm sorry. So yeah, I'm just, just making some... Uh, Hopefully you can see some of it, just some details here. So his face is a little more stark, 
but he's sore, you know, he's puking up a woman. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> And Jeff, actually, I can answer that question. One of the times I was there uh, playing when Brendan was, I know that Aaron beat Brendan. So there's at least one person who can do it. People beat me all the time. Like, I have, I have, I have this kryptonite. It's new players. I can never beat a new player. For some reason, I'm teaching the game, and I can never beat them. It's, I mean, I try really hard. but so. Um, and then normal people beat me as well. They get some sort of unwritten law if you're uh, if you're new to the game that uh, yeah. you're gonna win against an experienced player. I lose games all the time. Like the less familiar I am with the list, the less likely I am to lose it. But then I get comfortable with the list and I stop thinking. My brain just shuts off. Then I start losing. It's like oh, maybe I need to do something else, like paint. Right. <laughs> so, which actually is also something that happens when you're painting, right? You get used to painting a very specific way, so you just keep painting that way and that way. Um, so, to kind of go back to painting, it is good to always try something new and different when you're painting, I think. Um, just so, even if you're not, like, definitely if you're not comfortable with it, because you're never going to be comfortable with something if you're not trying something new, right? So, in-game or in-paint, just try something. Just experiment, mess around. Get outside your comfort zone because that's what's going to push you to be better as a player or a painter. What uh, so what are what are like maybe I don't know two or three top tips or techniques that you think um, will will really elevate somebody from um, maybe kind of a, a beginner I don't want to say tabletop but a beginning standpoint to the next level of painting. What are, what are things that people can focus on? I would really work on two brush blending um, if it's something you. Uh, are willing to give a shot just because I used to paint um, base coat wash base coat highlight so basically three colors right um, and then as I kept painting I tried to get better and better with my next miniature um, I would just add more layers to certain certain areas so like I'd paint um, base coat shade shade or wash wash just a deeper wash and then you know highlight and then I'd do another highlight layer um, but what th one thing I started doing with my washes when I was using it was I was actually doing two brush blending without even knowing it. Cause like, just like the washes I did on this in flesh, which were so thin, they're basically like washes. Um, I'm just going to give an example. I'm not, I don't actually have paint on my brush, but I would just, you know, do a wash, right? Like that on like something. And then I come by and I just swipe it away. And it's a, and a, at the very basic, that is what two brush blending, like the concept of it is. And that would uh, separate the shade from the, or the, the wash from the base coat. And I didn't have to reclaim all of a sudden because it was, it was giving me that separation. Um, but I, then I started moving on to wet blending. If you've ever done wet blending, it's a nightmare. It's a frightmare. Frightmare. <laughs> um, so doing two brush blending from wet blending, oh, oh, never, never do that jump. That's working. That's the opposite way. Do do two brush blending first and practice it. Um, but uh, just more layers. Just try to add more layers. Like if you want to be be better, just more layers. I mean, you can practice brush control. I mean, that's always a big deal. Like coming here, I was reliant before I came here. I relied. Uh, my dark lines and my black lines are basically just my deep recesses of washes, which is probably what a lot of people will do. You're like, oh, it gives so much good definition. Well, that's what it's doing. It's basically dark lining for you. So if you look at my first model, the Liss Healer, I'm calling it out. If you go look at it, you'll see some really thick dark lines because I couldn't just wash in my dark lines all of a sudden because it's studio quality. I had to actually paint them in. So my brush was like, you know, whoa, whoa, it's so crazy. It's so big. It's so thick. I didn't have brush control. But forcing myself to actively paint those dark lines over studio model and studio model and studio model, eventually my brush just got better. And that's, again, just trying something different and, and engaging it. So if you're not good at freehand, freehand. It's going to give you better brush control. You're going to get better at it. If you don't want to waste your time on a model, you know, you can just do it right here, right? And just do, like, some lines. Just keep doing it until you get thinner and thinner and thinner. And then eventually you get so thin that you're like, all right, I'm ready for whatever. And that's going to help with your highlight layers and your eyes and all that stuff. So... Just engage the way you paint. That's going to make you better. We got a brush control video with you talking about uh, these techniques specifically. And, uh, Do we? In the hopper for one of our upcoming videos. Yeah. That is true. Oh, I had facts. no idea. I'll be happy to record that with you. <laughs> yeah. 
So if you're curious about, you know, like that technique and some of the other ones that we've uh, that we've already covered or will be covering in some of our uh, future uh, P3 hobby videos, you can always check those on youtube.com slash privateer press prime. And then, yeah, uh, Joris pretty much had it close. Uh, what Brendan's got uh, for holding the model is he's got a cap from a can of primer. And he's got some double-sided tape that it's holding the miniature to that. And then the cap is resting on a mic stand. Um, so I don't suggest the mic stand if you're at home. <laughs> That's something that I, I make the painters do so that we can keep the miniature in focus for the cameras. The mic stand is not really the necessary focus piece of equipment for yeah, yeah. painting at home. Um, no, but the, definitely the cap, the cap and the double-sided tape, will it just helps tremendously. Um, because then you don't have to, or at least minimally, you touch the model, um, which will help not wipe off paint. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm happy with that for now. I mean, I might go back and do more touch-ups, but that's going to depend on other colors on it, bringing it around it. Um, right now, it's pretty red, which I'm not sure if that's going to be the final result yet, but I, I kind of want to bring more colors in before I go back to it. So, um, so now I'm going to move on to the witch face, which I've already base coated once, but I'm going to go ahead and just, um, oh, nope, still solid. So I'll move on to the first shade, um, which I will try with, I'm not sure. Let's just, let's figure out something else. Uh, we'll do some troll blood highlight, I guess, because I know that's going to be in just, just a little bit. Um, I'll add some carnal pink maybe. It'll give some of the redness, um, but while keeping it still pretty light, because she's supposed to have a pretty pallid flesh there. So um, but that's going to be too red. So I'm going to work in some. Let's see, maybe midland flesh. Oh, that's that's Rin. There you go. And then, Brendan, is there anything you do from, like, an ergonomic standpoint to make it so you can paint for a while without, like, having to hunch your back over or get uncomfortable? Like, is there a setup that you like to have so that you can paint comfortably for a long time? Um, yes, it is called a standing desk. I'm currently sitting down, so I'm also trying to adjust to the fact that I am not standing because I'm so used to painting while I stand. But within the first couple weeks, I knew that I had to switch to a standing desk because that's what Dallas would, would had. Um, just because long-term painting sitting down, because long-term sitting down is not what, not a good thing generally. So, um, but that helps because I can like stretch while I'm painting or kick out my feet or walk in place if I, you know, something starts falling asleep or something. So. So, standing desks, they're so awesome. If somebody doesn't have a standing desk or uh, that's not an option for them to stand up at home, are there the things that they can do sitting in a chair to avoid hunching over for long periods of time and having, uh, you know, various aches and sores that way? Not that I'm familiar with. I mean, I would if you're going to sit down for a long time, invest in a good chair. I mean, that's that's just how it's got to be. Um, don't buy a cheap folding chair just because it's as cheap as you can find. I mean, it's your comfort and your health, so... Well, and realistically, they're also going to run into situations while they're painting where they need to let a layer or two dry. So mm -hmm. that's probably a good time to stand up, walk around, stretch, stretch sure. out. Yeah, that's kind of what I did. Like, I painted a lot, but sometimes I'd also plan whenever I couldn't paint to just do, like, a 15-minute spurt. So, I'd like, if I, since I painted with a lot of washes, I would make sure a wash was applied and I could walk away. So I'm not even waiting for the wash. I'll come back in the evening or whenever else. So even that 15 minutes of like, oh, I only have 15 minutes to paint. It's not like oh, I can't do anything. Yes, I can. 15 minutes, I can definitely find something to do. But I'm, I'm very meticulous like when it comes to my painting, just in the sense that like I plan out what I'm going to paint, um, when I'm going to paint and stuff like that before I came here. Um, I mean, because now that I'm here, I know I'm painting for eight hours, so it's easier <laughs> uh, to plan stuff out. But like when I was at home, I'd kind of just be bored at work, sitting there waiting for customers to come in. So I just like get a piece of paper and kind of plan out 
my, well, how I was going to go ahead and paint um, just in what kind of layers and stuff like that, just so I could be like, well, I'm only have 15 minutes now, so I can do this. So I planned it out. So I made sure that wash was drying when I was going to get food or running an errand or something. And I can speak, um, that's a very legitimate way to mm -hmm, get an mm -hmm, army mm -hmm. or a unit painted up is 15 minutes a day. If you've got a place where you can kind of leave your paints out and your brush is handy, just sit down, just put that next layer on. You don't have mm. to, not everything has to be a marathon. Well, yeah, and using like a, a, a set of wells like Brendan's got there for mixing his paint and stuff like that so that you can keep your paints closed or using a wet palette if you prefer that so you can actually close that and it'll keep your paints wet and ready to go if you do have to stand up and walk away. Yeah, for two brush blending, I mean, the well palette is definitely your best bet. But you can also like do something like this and you just close it off like this and it, it can stay there. Like I can leave at night if I needed to paint to stay wet and I'll come in the morning. I might need to add a little bit of water or something. But it's still pretty much ready to go. So, I mean, as long as you're not leaving it, um, leaving it like that for days, um, you can plan around that as well. Because um, a wet palette not necessarily as good for wet or for two brush blending as. I'm gonna add some uh, battle dress green here into this previous mix. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm adding yet. We'll see. I want this to be a little more. There we go. Mm, that looks disgusting. Perfect. <laughs> Um, and it's hard to see some of the, I think, the hues, um, but they'll come across and get a better shot once the final image is taken. Those cameras, man, they don't forgive. Yeah, I'm always getting yelled at anytime I kind of get in too close with Dallas. He's like, you're all up in there, too close. So for those that are, you know, that have joined us recently or that are going to be watching this later, uh, what step are you doing right now? Uh, so I'm just doing the second shade, and this is um, to kind of, so the first shade on flesh was to kind of give it more of a red hue, and then sure. this one's using um, some greens to kind of bring it back um, that palette to more look. fleshy look, yeah. Yeah. So we got about, looks like we've got about five minutes remaining, so if there's anything else we want to impart before we head out for the day, what, what might that be? Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've still got a little bit of time. I was just mentioning it so that, like, in case there's anything you wanted to make sure to get across while you're, you know, doing these faces. Um, I don't know. Like, this, this, honestly, like, if you like painting tabletop and you like painting washes, I think you can be very happy with this model because there's a lot of little crevices. Um, but if you like painting high, uh, high quality faces as well, you're going to also enjoy this model because there's so many interesting things you can do that you normally can't do. And once you learn the lore of this model, you'll totally see that the sky's the limit. <laughs> Brendan's giving me a super creepy look right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's my flirting face. <laughs> like you said, a super creepy look. Um, <laughs> so that, that actually leads uh, pretty well into Joris's next question, which is, uh, so you're using a lot of, you know, like what some people would consider merc colors in these skin tones. Um, could you be using brighter colors like blues or purples? I um, maybe cooler colors is what we were going for. Oh, oh, um, for sure. Yeah, you could add some like like coal black is a really good color. Um, like a go-to great shading mix. Like I could have used it on the flesh here. It would have been like Battlefield Brown and, and Exile Blue, which is a great colors. Those are two great colors to mix together. And you can... You can add more Battlefield or you can add more Exile, depending on what you're trying to, to go for. Like, you'll see that shade show up um, in the Signar recipe for the Signar Blue, but it's just, those are just two great colors to mix together. Well, there's um, some pretty great bright colors in some of the Trolls, too, isn't there? Um, yeah. But to go back to what you were saying, um, Trader Green isn't necessarily a Merc color. Um, it's just a, it's just a shade that we have access to that we can blend together. Like P3 colors are just really good um, once you start experimenting to just mix with with some cells to kind of figure out other colors. Because when we're painting, um, like we get color concept, but to get this horse flesh, I kind of just went off the idea of what the color concept is painting, but then I look for actual real world horses for reference. So when I'm trying to simulate those, I'm not just choosing which pot of paint I think is closest. I'm trying to mix to those colors. So I'm using whatever colors I think from experience or just on the whim can create those colors I want. Um, 
and go from there, basically. Um, so mix your colors together and just trial and error and, and, and keep a log of your colors and what you like. You can paint it on the, the notebook so you can keep it similar and you get an idea of what it is and then you can go back to those colors. Because no matter how many pots of paint we make, particularly if there's more coming soon, you're still going to find mixes that you can come up with. Um, and that's going to be your colors. Like if you look at the best paint in, in the world, it's not because their technique is sound. It, it is, trust me, they are amazing techniques, but it's their use of colors that's really bringing those models to life. So you need to do more than just use paint, straight out the paint pot if that's what you're trying to get to, which also goes back to what you're saying. If you're trying yeah. to elevate your painting, you just need to work on color. That was that kind of that's... reminds me too that like they they had some of the uh, the Grimkin colors that uh, mm -hmm. uh, for pre release at Origins they sold out in like fifteen minutes so apparently yeah. people like the new colors good they should because they're really awesome um, so that's all we're able to paint for today unfortunately um, there will be more coming soon as you should learn to expect um, so far every Thursday I think we're gonna keep that going that would be great keep it going keep showing up and we'll keep showing up awesome we'll hope to see you soon. Take care. Thank you for watching. Bye.